Hey, what's going on, people? It's SGZ here from the Spartan Game Zone, and in this video, I'll be counting down the top 10 legendary assault rifles in Borderlands 3. I did a weapon class countdown series six months ago, and it's time to revisit it as we've had two new DLCs drop along with countless weapon buffs. So, today we'll be focusing on ARs, and I'll be telling you who drops them explaining what they do and giving you tips on how to maximize their damage. If you enjoyed the video I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like and if you're watching my videos and you're not subscribed it'd be great if you could hit that sub button. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what your favorite assault rifle is and do let me know what weapon class you'd like me to count down next. And let's crack into it. We open this countdown of the top 10 legendary assault rifles in Borderlands 3 with the Shredder Fire, an extremely rapid firing weapon that can come in any element including Kinetic and has an increased chance to drop from Titan, the final boss of the Slaughter Shaft. The Shredder Fire is the single fastest firing weapon in the entire game, matched only by the Tizzy at full speed. It comes with a mammoth 100 plus magazine and fires at over 16 rounds a second. Its bullet per damage ratio isn't the highest around, but a finger slip on the trigger is easily enough to blitz an enemy. It also comes with an underbarrel attachment to provide an alternative firing method, like a grenade launcher, but you can also get a twin barrel, which doubles its fire rate and is absolutely insane to say the least. When you hear this gun, it's almost as if the sound is constant. Its bullets riddle your enemy's bodies, jiggling them up like jello before there's nothing left. Next up is the Sawbar, an incendiary only COV weapon that has an increased chance to drop from Borman Nate, who you fight around here in the Meridian outskirts. The Sawbar is a spectacular gun, both in the damage it deals, but in particular with its effect. That effect is maintained from its pearlescent variant in Borderlands 2, where each bullet bursts apart to create a fiery explosion after traveling a certain distance. The sheer size and force of each blast is enough to decimate enemies, and due to the area it covers, you don't even need line of sight for them to just melt away. However, the distance you need to be to activate it is massive. It's incredibly far away, so much so that you might need your glasses. You'll need to be about 20 meters away, or 65.617 feet, which is a long way and not practical a lot of the time. If that was shortened, the sawbar would be a lot better, but for now it's still a great gun, especially on Moe's who can make the most of its unique effect. Number 8 now, and it's the Ogre, a non-elemental weapon that will drop the fastest from Anointed Alpha. You fired as part of the Malevolent Practice Quest, and you can find them around here in the Anvil. The Ogre fires a barrage of explosive projectiles at a solid clip, although the barrel will spin for the first few rounds before rotating at full speed. The projectiles don't travel lightning fast and are not very accurate, but that won't stop you from landing shots. It does come in a times 2 variant which is perfect for Moe's, and that is where this gun shines brightest. With it you can yell, get out of my swamp, while you pout your enemies with an endless wave of ordnance. It's the perfect choice if you want to just blow everything up, and it does a great job of it too. At number 7 is the Sickle, a remarkably unique Vladov weapon that can come in every available flavor and has an increased chance to drop from Anointed X4. You fight around here in the Anvil, another target of the quest Malvin Practice. I keep saying it and I'm going to say it again, the Sickle is not an assault rifle, it's a shotgun, but it does take AR ammo. It fires buckshot rounds at a steady pace with moderate recoil. A normal Sickle isn't great, but a boom Sickle definitely is, taking a standard shot and charging it with TNT. That's right, the boom Sickle deals splash damage, allowing it to be enhanced by Moe's and Amara. Its pallets are fired in the shape of a Sickle and are concentrated best while aiming, but there really isn't any need when even wayward shots will blow away your targets. Number 
Number 6 greets us with the Chaos, an elemental weapon that can not come radioactive, and has an increased chance to draw from the Psycho Billies. They're all crazy and they're all called Billy, who you fight if you dare, beneath the waterfall here in the Ambermire. The Chaos is chaotic, firing quick fire rounds that result in a widespread explosion on each kill. The blast is easily large enough to envelop multiple enemies, but will only be triggered if a bullet from the gun was the thing that killed them. That means the blasts don't come as often as you'd think, but when they do, you'll definitely notice. They're also elemental, attuned to the gun's element, and if you're after the best one for triggering its effect, it would have to be cryo due to the lack of damage over time it causes. It's a great gun for every single vault hunter that'll often reward your kills with the crack of a supernova. Halfway through now and it's the Breath of the Dying, a gun with a great effect that can only come in corrosive. It has an increased chance to drop from Blinding Banshee you find here in Desolation's Edge. The Breath of the Dying is an incredible assault rifle that doesn't let its single element define it, instead enhance it. Every time you get a kill, a radial burst of corrosive orbs will sweep outwards from your target. They deal splash damage and will annihilate any enemies in the vicinity. It's the Breath of the Dying and it is incredibly deadly. Like the Chaos, the effect will only activate if the gun is what killed them, but its bullet damage is fantastic as well. It will rip through the toughest mobs in the game with ease, and is comfortably one of the game's best exponents against armor. At number 4 is the Star Helix, a multi palleted AR which can come in every element except corrosive and fire. It can be obtained the fastest by targeting the Go Go Power Troopers you fight around here in Atlas HQ. The Star Helix is like a toned down Monarch, firing less pellets slower but each one dealing higher damage, and it only comes with 24 bullets in the mag. It's a gun that encourages you to be close to your target as its projectiles are fired horizontally with a noticeable spread. When they all land though, this gun can tear through health bars. You can mob with it well like all of these guns, but it is incredibly well suited to bossing too, as its multiple projectiles consistently land with force. In third place is the Clairvoyance, a DLC 2 Jacob's Assault Rifle that can only come in cryo, and can only be dropped by Critchy, who you fight in this area of Curse Haven. The Clairvoyance comes most often in semi-automatic form, but it does come in a fully automatic or masher variant as well. It combines the traits of various Jacob's and Torg weapons when you land a critical hit. Landing them will stick bombs to your target which explode after a period of time, dealing extreme amounts of damage and ricocheting bullets to nearby enemies. If you land multiple consecutively, the grenades will explode at once, dealing monster damage, and it's incredibly capable against bosses as well as mobs. The silver medal goes to the Soul Render, a dial gun finely crafted with purple steel, which can come in every element and can only be dropped from either Tom or Zam, who you fight here in Heart's Desire as part of DLC 2. The Soul Render fires at a decent pace, dealing high damage, but where it truly comes to form is through the summoning of souls. The souls of fallen dead periodically fly from its barrel in the form of purple skulls and home in on whoever you're shooting at. They deal splash damage and thanks to the December 17th hotfix, now hit harder than ever. Its unique effect greatly enhances its overall DPS as its base damage rivals many guns in this countdown, but the skulls help it to go above and beyond. It's an awesome rifle that you can never go wrong with and it's a great splash damage AR for modes. Before number 1 shows its face, let's cover some honourable mentions. First up, the Stone Thrower, a DLC 3 non-elemental Jacob's rifle, which can only be dropped by Cormarch, who you fired around here in Ashfall Peaks. 
The stone thrower isn't your typical Jacob's weapon, it doesn't care if you get a critical hit or not, it'll ricochet projectiles regardless. It deals high damage, especially on critical hits, and like the clairvoyance, typically comes semi-automatic, but you can also get a Gatlin version which is fully automatic as well, like the one I'm using here. It's a good choice on all Vault Hunters, particularly on Flak, who can make use of its great critical damage bonus, or on Amara, who can increase the amount of devastation caused by a single bullet. Next up, the Juliet's Dazzle, a Mayhem 4 Plus weapon that can only come in either non-elemental or cryo, and can either be obtained by defeating Wotan the Invincible, or from Aurelia, who you find around here in Black Barrel Cellars. The Juliet's Dazzle is quite dazzling, what with your inability to see when you're aiming down sights, but it does deal good damage with the option to come with the times 2 variant. Its projectiles shimmer through the air and will rebound off world surfaces multiple times, which can raise its damage tremendously. Line it up, fire away, and the Julius Dazzle will swarm your enemies with a mass of sparkling Shazam, crushing them with fairy dust. To add to that, it also deals splash damage and refills the magazine per kill, potentially enabling limitless fire, which is what you'll get if you use it to its full potential. Now for the damned, yet another blood off assault rifle which has an increased chance to drop from the Agonizer 9000, you fight at the end of the Guts of Carnivora. The damned is like a toned down shredder fire but only by a little bit. Its mag size is still healthy like all blood off assault rifles, and its fire rate is rapid. It's certainly better value for ammo than the shredder fire with higher base damage, but it does lack that underbarrel attachment. Nevertheless, it'll still down opponents in quick fire time. Lastly, unobtainable now due to their place in the cartel event are the OPQ system and no pew pew. Both were great assault rifles when first introduced, but we'll have to wait until the event reopens before they can be properly placed. It's time for number one, and the gold medal goes to the Monarch, a gun that simply has all bases covered. It's a Mayhem 6 Plus weapon that will drop the fastest from Killer Vault. You fight here in Lectra City. The Monarch is a mastermind of dishing out damage. Who knew combining multiple pellets with an enormous fire rate would result in such a beast? Someone did, and they were right. It comes in times 4 or times 8 variants, with times 8 being overkill while mobbing, and 4 giving you best value on that front. You'd think this gun was powerful without even knowing what its bipod attachment does, and that's double its damage. When out, you'll be a turret, moving slowly without the ability to jump, but hitting incredibly hard. They can feel counterintuitive depending on your playstyle, and often isn't even needed to deal great damage. It's fantastic on everyone, but does hold a special place in Flax hands, who can dismantle pretty much every boss without even breaking a sweat. So that's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned of the top 10 legendary assault rifles in Borderlands 3, and do let me know what your number 1 pick is. If you enjoyed the video I'd appreciate it if you could drop a like or hey maybe even subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.